okay, just explain we how we met initially and stuff like that. Okay. Alright, what was the workshop called again? I know what it was about, obviously, developing your business plan. Yeah. Um, so, when do we start? Well, what's your goal in terms of starting your entrepreneurial process? Have you started recording already? Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> Oh wait, let me start from the beginning then. Okay. Okay, so we met at um, a workshop catered towards black and minority ethnic groups. Um, it's basically focused on developing our business plan and taking it from an idea to something that is tangible. What was next on my goal? My goal is to have a really successful, successful, a really successful business. Mm -hmm. Yes. On the spot now. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, let's just pray this that is, that's focused. Okay. What are we talking about? Our business plan. Yes. So, my business plan is obviously natural hair related. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I want to come up with a t shirt on hair growth and stuff like that because when people, people struggle with hair growth, they feel discouraged and feel like your hair's not actually growing when it is. You just mm -hmm. don't see it. So, it's just going on the basis of that and then hair tips and stuff that come along with it. And it's an everyday problem, yeah, isn't it? Literally. Yeah, it's an everyday problem because all black people have to deal with managing their own hair yeah. at times and, and how people view natural hair as well. It's a problem within the workplace, for example, people view natural hair as untidy, unkept, all of that. So, people feel the need. Like, I know I feel the need to straighten my hair because it's like an interview or something like that or have yes. hair like tucked away that is a positive problem yeah because it's not viewed as like it's just not kept. kept it's not viewed as the, the workplace for the workplace hair it's like but that's my hair that's my natural hair yeah that's you know well however you want to wear your hair that's the thing i feel like there's always a certain type of problem i guess there it is it. and it's strange because it's the natural hair that grows out of your scalp yeah like, what can you do about that exactly there's nothing really but yeah that's my concept which is fine. really good but my concept is basically addressing the disconnect between the diaspora and people in africa i feel like a lot of diasporans don't really connect with their land of origin which is quite sad um, and what's more is that you're seeing more and more people just like us who are getting more interested in connecting with their land of origin and there's no um, explicit platform for you to yeah, use exactly. um, to gain this sort of knowledge and sometimes it can be quite embarrassing as you yeah, know, like pointed <laughs> out going out and searching for more information about things that you should probably yeah, already no. know because I'm like Nigerian and I want, I'm from the Yoruba tribe but I don't know Yoruba and that's something I feel a bit insecure about I guess because yeah. I don't really know it. And what's, what's worse actually? That is so much better. Yes, oh. okay, yes, you call it how you put it. Finally. <laughs> And I think what's worse is that sometimes when people try and make an effort and go back home to where they may be from, so for me, for instance, it's Jamaica and Sierra Leone. Yeah. But whenever I go back home, I'm seen as a foreigner. Yeah. I don't like. There's always this distinction between us and, and them, them, but and it should be so inclusive. Exactly. I feel like that's the main concept is your thing to make it more inclusive. Exactly. Everybody. So there's no really constraint. So don't feel weird about going to pursue something that they want to know about. And literally it makes more sense for their countries um, of origin, for instance Jamaica or Sierra Leone, if they embrace their diaspora, yeah. do you know how much money could be flowing into your country? Oh, like if you big. really made us feel like very comfortable in our own countries, then you know investment would be flowing like crazy. Oh. But we don't really have to do investment helps build your country so much. It affects your personal life. Because yeah. if money's coming in, that's coming into a bank account. <laughs> That's kind exactly. of a job and benefits everyone. Exactly. And I think right now the majority of investment in a country is in the form of uh, remittances. So people usually just send money back home by, uh, what is it, MoneyGram. Yeah. What else is there out there? Um, credit no, there's, there's, a few, there's a few schemes for different countries. Exactly. Yeah. But that's very informal. Now, if you kind of engage the diaspora a little bit more, then, you know, formal amounts of money would be going into the country, like, in the form of, you know, I don't know, shops and 
things like that where people where you can actually employ the locals so on and people don't actually see countries in Africa as a good place to invest in I know that's a, that's which a problem which is quite bad because okay say in Nigeria for example that's meant to be one of the top African countries economically but people still have so many problems there like we still run the backup generators most of the time the mm. electricity is a problem the roads are a problem and it shouldn't be the case really but I feel like it's more to do with government as well corruption like certain things yeah. um, it's making people more aware of certain things and how yeah. to really go about it so I feel like the investment in African countries is just seen as poor no food yes that's some countries and some areas but some areas also are rich but too rich they're taking the money for themselves and not giving yeah so i feel like that's where the resources come in to try and yeah. you know finance and balance more directly to the areas in yeah. need yeah i agree yeah. i agree it's yeah i mean nigeria i think there's so much potential yeah and we've already seen that with nigeria they're like big dogs right now yeah like they're one of the most powerful economies in africa um after South Africa, I think, and I think God is up there as well. Yeah. Um, but the potential is crazy, but because of like poverty and people's skewed perception of Nigeria as well, has kind of hindered its, it's growth. Allowed it completely, so. A lot. So I think that's kind of a part of what my idea is about, is trying to, you know, correct people's perceptions about what life is like in their countries of origin and kind of, you know, encouraging more interest um, in it and, you know, hopefully that might boost um, immigration, you know, simple things like tourism as well. Yeah. Because a lot of these economies, economies they rely on tourism. tourism. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's basically our ideas and it's... I think we're going to mark today as the official starting point. Yes. So we met um, over the summer at the workshop, we telling you guys about, but we haven't done anything since then. Not at all. So our lives. <laughs> our lives have been it's crazy. It's just not been happening. It really hasn't. So yeah. I feel like if we mark today as doing something towards that, and you know, because it's better with two people, you know, supporting each other, motivating each other to do certain mm -hmm. things. It's harder when it's just you. Yes. When you've got other people in the same situation as you, the same boat, I feel like it's easier to, you know, do certain things, we talk, to message them, we up. Because, I think it's I 100% agree. Two minds are better than one. We can synergize. Preach. Preach. <laughs> do the most. <laughs> yeah. And we'll redocument um, our steps in this yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this can be the episode one of the entrepreneurship yes. road, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we can get a grilling each time we fail, but hopefully we'll come I'll be on you. I'm the sort of person to be on you. I'll be like, um, why have I not seen this? Why have I not seen an Instagram post? Um, yes. Day one has been me creating an Instagram. Yeah. So it's got this not have had Instagram till today, so I had to go on that. She now has Instagram. Go follow her at yes. Reclaim Your Story. I'll leave it in the description box below. Thank you. And don't be afraid to pursue it because it can happen it can happen you it's have to do it the one. right way you have to be focused you have to be driven to do it but you've also got to rely on your support network exactly so surround yourself with yeah. the right people exactly people that is can key. drag you down if, you, mm. if you're not careful mm. there's a whole other story on that one exactly. if you know you know but anyone else has any, any tips yeah like talk to us about the ideas you want to start if you have any ideas so i feel like because i'm a student she's working full time so be a student again yeah she's gonna be doing her masters so if you can relate to being a student just working constantly and trying to find the balance in terms of doing what you do being an entrepreneur I've got exams. I, I should be revising this. <laughs> I've got exams to be doing. Oh, the bad um, things I should be doing, but I'm not. Because this is valuable yeah, as well. Exactly. Like, this is productive. I mean, you might be out for coffee and having a But we've gotten somewhere, but at least talking about it. And then um, self care as well. Like, there's so many things you want to do, but you're only one person. Exactly. So. 
yeah. 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 Yeah.